update. Dustin Tibbetts here, financial advisor with Jazz Wealth Managers in our temporary studio facing what is working on being the coolest of all of our financial studios we've put together. Y you guys know we're laid back. I wear the hoodie. Some people think that's you know irresponsible or immature, but um, financial advice is boring, right? I try to make it interesting. We try to develop different ways to share ideas and be factual about the things that we share, not just have opinions, right? Everybody's got an opinion. Uh, we try to actually break things down and quantify every single thing that we share with you. Uh, so I thank you for watching. And what I'm gonna focus on today are my very close to retirees or people that are currently retired because it's a whole different game than when you're in your 30s. Right now, I'm 39, no, I'm 39, oh boy. <laughs> I literally just realized that. <laughs> I am 39 years old. And the focus for me is growth. I don't want dividend yield. I don't want safety. I want growth. I'm ready to ride the markets up and down. My focus is on investments and how much money can I save for the various goals that I have. But for someone that's about to retire or like we're about to show you, someone who is retired, the investment returns are important, but they're not primary. We're more interested in sequence of returns risk, withdrawal rates, uh, withdrawal strategies, right? How do we withdraw the most that we can uh, withdraw and do it efficiently as possible? We want to keep as much of the dough as we've spent all this time growing. So it's a whole different scenario and a lot of advisors either focus 100% on that or they just never touch it. And that kills me because there's money to be made in your withdrawal strategy. Well, anyways, I have this client, um, actually I feel like I've gotten to know him quite well actually lately, but uh, this, they're concerned about the market. They're concerned, they're gonna make it. I'll just show you, let's dive right into it here. They're gonna make it, their probability of success after we've tore this thing apart. Uh, again, what you're seeing, it looks simple. We've spent some time to develop this, of course. Um, they're going to make it, it's not gonna be a problem. But this client says, I'm, yeah, I, the markets worry me, inflation worries me, I got some concerns about taxes. And I said, okay, well, let's, let me do some work and then I'll put something simple together for you here. So what we did is we took their entire plan and we stress tested it. But before I do that, let me share with you here that um, they are currently retired. So they had retirement ages of 65 and 67. Retirement expenses need to be this. We've changed their savings to, or their investments to be as conservative as possible because of their concerns for the market. So you can see why there's a difference between how much they would have ended with if they're willing to ride the roller coaster and how much they will, but still very successful. Uh, they're not saving anywhere, of course, because there, there's no need to do that. And so what we wanted to do was stress test different scenarios. So I put this together and we stuck this in here to make it really simple for these clients to um, maybe expand on the numbers, right? So they're concerned about the stock markets here. And again, naturally, it's a lot more complicated than this. I'm, you're seeing the end product, right? So uh, give us a little credit here, or a little patience. It's, it's, uh, there was a lot that goes into this. Um, concerned about the markets. We say, okay, wh wh what? Where do we run into trouble? Well, the COVID decline was 30%, right? So what if we said you had another 30% decline, but this time it didn't recover right away? what would be your probability of success? Your current probability of success is essentially 100. So this is our baseline. We're gonna compare everything off of this. Market crashes 30% and takes more than three years for it to recover, doesn't hurt them, right? So okay, well, what about 50%, right? With some, there's only a few of you that live through that one, right? Uh, maybe, maybe a few more. Uh, but anyways, let's say 50% in here. Okay, it's not looking good, but uh, it's not bad at all, right? It's not looking as good as the baseline. We're in great shape. He's still going to make it. We could go into all the details from here and see what happens. But the client mentioned that inflation was a concern and taxes were a concern, and I, I could agree with him there. So we settle on, how about if the markets crash 40%, take more than three years to recover? In the meantime, inflation is 2.5% higher than expected. That's from today. That's not from when we were at 2%, but now we're pushing 6%, right? None of that garbage. And uh, the taxes, right? Let's say your taxes are 30% higher than you expected. They change something and you're no longer eligible for different parts of what were considered tax advantage plans. So we're playing kind of doomsday scenario here. And when we go into this, you're gonna see a couple different things change here. Every category is actually gonna change. Markets crashing by 40%, remember that doesn't really move the needle for them. And why doesn't it, by the way? Because they're in the, the ultimate of preservation that they can be. Like they are just sitting as safe as humanly possible. So markets aren't really affecting them at this point. All right, so moving down the list here. If taxes 
are higher by 30%. This is not such a big deal for them because they have a lot of post-tax money. We've already made some changes there, but it's still going to ding them a little bit. There's still basically no chance that they're going to be uh, unsuccessful. They're going to be just fine. But if I look over here, I see inflation. Okay, inflation's hurting them. Now that makes sense, right? If you think about it, because their investments are as safe as possible, markets be damned, up or down doesn't really matter. Taxes, they're sort of shielded because they're in these Roth accounts. They're sort of protected from that, got some cash on the sidelines. So taxes aren't, aren't going to hit them. They kind of already have. That's a good thing. But inflation, we all can't run away from that one, right? We're, we're feeling that right now. $11 for meatballs at, at the grocery store. Crazy. It was four meatballs. Anyways, side topic. So when we look at this one, inflation is the big concern. Uh, being higher by 2.5% is not a big deal as long as it doesn't happen like overnight and then sustain itself but that's where the problem comes in so with this client in particular boy if we're up three and a half percent or inflation is higher by three and a half percent than expected throughout the lifetime of his retirement that's the big ding right there right that's how you stress test your plan notice how that for some of you you might have aggressive investments and that's where your trouble area is going to be maybe some of you are in taxable accounts or pre-tax accounts that's going to be the focus area some of you may not have health care and you're on your own but you're retiring early and you're not 65 yet and all that so that could be it in this case there is a really solid plan for this client besides inflation. So we now know everything else aside, we'll keep an eye on taxes and the markets, of course, and everything like that. Everything else aside, we're going down the inflation category. We're going to see what we have to do for this plan to make sure that inflation doesn't start to make it where maybe he's got to go back to work. Remember, they are retired there, right? Um, okay. Naturally, uh, this looked pretty simple, I would imagine, but uh, this is the kind of detail I like to go into. I love to focus on this for individual clients because that's unique to the individual. Investments, taxes, healthcare, in, mm, not inflation, um, returns on your investments there, social security, those are all unique to the individual, so how can you have a general thing of what to do, right? I love doing the details there. Anyways, if you like the details, like I said, we're expanding. Normally this thing is not here. We have a lot more to uh, work on and show you and share with you. Hope you'll join us and uh, stick around. If you hit the subscribe button, that helps us out a lot for some reason, but I'm supposed to ask you that. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your day. See you on the closing beat in just a little bit.